Hello everyone, KJ4YZI Ham Radio Concepts, Field Day 2019. We are back at the place you saw me two years ago. How you doing? Good, how you doing? All right. And uh, we're at the Condo Association again. It's kind of like an invasion of radios and antennas here. I'll give you a 360 here to show you what we're working with. Okay, we got club trailers. I'll try to give you a, an idea. But you see the condos behind us? So this is what happens. This is the idea of this is we have all kinds of ways of putting antennas up with these buildings and amenities and all this but in the event of a natural disaster or a situation you know there's a couple thousand people that live in this condo association and this right here would be the example of what happens when you have to uh, you know sustain communications during a field day and this is kind of like a practice to come out to field day fire up your gear get people involved get new people involved in what it is what we're doing and um, you know exercise your gear and just get familiar with it so the w4ot vero beach field day <clears throat> is where i was two years ago and that's where i am here again and i'll try to give you an idea of what's happening i mean we have a two meter beam up here i'll show you the stuff we have inside and there is just a gang of wire antennas that are strung throughout the condos we got a the club trailer over there that's the two element 20 meter beam there wire antennas we have all kinds of stuff i got uh, my 9700 with me my 7300 we almost made a satellite contact so let me take you around and show you what's going on and what we're planning on doing there's hey, rick it's rick m4wrw what's up rick we have the best club in the nation we here do i'm showing w4ot show i am showing sure everybody them everybody sees everything we got going on i got to make a trip around here a walk and see what's going on here and all the stuff that is displayed here it's amazing Come to Florida and join our great club. Are we going to work a satellite today, Rick? We're working the satellite at 9.03 p.m. Gotcha. This is the Indian River County Emergency Management Mobile Communications Unit. Let me tell you again, if you're unaware, the W4OT or Vero Beach Indian River County Ham Radio Association in general here is by far more advanced than a lot. I mean, they have everything here. They have big fancy trucks to pull it. They got radios. They got trailers with towers. They have generators, they have staff, they have volunteers, they have emergency communications, anything from analog to wind link to CW to satellites to whatever. These guys are, this is it. And uh, I know who I'll find in this trailer later. That will be Dwayne and he'll be running CW all night. And we've seen him before in here and we'll do it again. So here is the Vero Beach Amateur Radio Club. Um, you know, the, the one I just showed you is the Indian River. This is actually for the VBARC. And they put this together and put a lot of work into it. John and the club, everybody, new siding on it, AC, crank up tower donated on there, and everything is wired into there. I want to look inside and see, uh, I wonder if there's anybody in here. I haven't really kind of went in there. Let's take a look. Ooh, it's nice and cold in here. They got, uh, you know, this thing can be towed and deployed. It's got solar, it's got batteries, it's got all kinds of stuff, generator, and I mean, everything is, look. You got ways to plug stuff in, power poles and ethernet to wire the thing up for different, uh, you know, situations. My camera's fogging up, it's so cold in here. And then we got the batteries under here. So I'm not sure, John, how long would this thing last on batteries? I don't know, we haven't tried it yet. Haven't tried it. It's, we, uh, it's just, second trip out right yeah now. we hope we don't have to use it in an emergency with this right here uh, we could load a lot more stuff in there they just have that for field day for now as an operating station then we got John's playhouse here this is what I call John's playhouse this is where me and John share a blanket when he keeps it 40 47 degrees overnight and uh, it's three o'clock in the morning and I'm just whipped and it's like a blizzard inside this is what we're gonna set up for I'm gonna try using this and there'll be a video exclusively on it this is the Chameleon MCOM 3 base antenna, 130 foot. I'm gonna try with John's help because there's already an array of antennas out here. We got, you know, wires up here. They got wires to the flagpoles. They got, you know, Moxon for six meters over here. Jan made that. They got a wire over to that pavilion there. I mean, wires everywhere. So I'm gonna see if maybe John has a push-up pole that we go over out toward that beach and we just kind of string that right out here to the beach and over here to the inside of the trailer. More emergency power. 
thing about that emergency power is it does get a little noisy on the uh, the receive because of all the generator noise but literature is fleet free if you want to get a ham radio license these guys will help you look at all the members here just got done eating so we have a station down here one station down there working We've got a station over here at that table station over there stations over there I hear a piano they have the software so they use logging software so all the stations that are on they uh, all log so that way you don't get duplicates but it keeps an eye on which states you have you know your total contacts there and they have that displayed here and anybody that's got their computers uh, like I have in my trailer here anybody's got a computer uh, you just sync it up to the network and it'll keep it up in real time and look who's over there he just got an award for being like the coolest guy ever Look at him. Jan, you have no idea I'm watching you. Let's see what else we got. <clears throat> well, here's how we get all the stuff out of here. Look at the, <laughs> the wires coax everywhere, right? Emergency power, you got a couple, oh. We got a uh, antenna here. Didn't know that was there. That looks like it's for maybe two meters. UHF something, but then you got the, I think that's an alpha up there. I'm not sure. Have to ask somebody who that is or what that is. So uh, here's your makeshift, uh, get your cables out and keep the AC in. All right. And uh, just keep it clear so that people can walk through here without hitting their heads. They got more gen so there must be about 15 generators here so everything is on generator power there is no commercial power at all okay there's another dipole over here that's strung that's probably for 80 meters strung over here between this condo and way over the roof over there so getting this stuff set up oh, here's another one got an antenna over here <coughs> see what this is oh that's a uh, mfj mag loop right there Works really good. They got theirs mounted horizontally. Me and John that time had ours mounted vertically. So they got that. And we have, here's the two meter with the rotator here on a tripod. Okay. And he is facing the ocean. Hmm. Okay. Maybe nobody's using it right now. The rotator's off or something. You can see a lot of stuff here. At ARRL Field Day, courtesy of the Whiskey 4 Oscar Tango W4OT Club in Indian River County, Florida, who puts this on. And man, let me tell you, these guys are just amazing. If you ever want a good treat at what field day is, come to Vero Beach. Come to field day. It is, I mean, as long as we're here. I don't know how long this will last, but this is going on, what, three years now? And uh, good stuff. Okay, it's about 11, 16 p.m. doing some overnight on 20 meters. Uh, so I'm hooked up to a two element beam right now. Got the logging software. I've made a few contacts. You can see the Echo Hotels up there. Made about seven or eight contacts. Uh, tried satellite, made it through a satellite, but uh, didn't complete the contact. But this is what's uh, happening here. You know, it's ice cold in this trailer. John stuff's over here, John's out. And, um, you know, I'm going to go check out Dwayne here in a little while, see what he's doing. I'll probably be up all night. Oh, uh, ending in Yankee again. It's so cold in there, my camera fogged up again. Let's see what we have in here. I bet you Dwayne's in here. Look at the camera lens. Dwayne! Yeah. You know what happened last time that just happened again? What? It's so cold in John's trailer. I came in here and it was fogged up. I had to wait for the lens to unfog. <laughs> so I see you on the, the software here. You're you're killing them here on uh, 40 meter CW. Yeah, yeah. It's working good for you, huh? Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I'm on the 20 meter beam. 20 meters is still open. And uh, yeah. 
Yeah, 40's, 40's open, and um, we're getting a lot of dupes now, but uh, well, we're up to 157 CW contacts, and a total phone contacts, 43. So I made about eight of those phone contacts. We were at, <laughs> we were at 35, and the CW, though, man, you're just killing it. Look at it. Yeah. You're knocking them dead. And we're the it, only CW station. Yeah. Against five phone stations. I heard Jim was. I heard Jim was on CW though. Yeah, he was. He made a couple. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. Nothing like Dwayne. Dwayne is the expert at. Uh, what, so you got the Elecraft here again. You got the same thing you had last year. K2. Yeah. The K2 with the amplifier. Yeah. And his uh, bug. That's the same mm -hmm. bug that he used last yeah, time. Yeah. Well, I'm using the keyer this year. Oh, you switched. Not the okay. bug. I'm using the keyer. Gotcha. And uh, yeah, working working out good. Um, it was pretty slow during the day. We didn't get much daytime contacts, but it's picking up now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I can't believe I've only made eight contacts. I don't know if you were at the uh, Wabasso Causeway here, but uh, I think that night I made like 212 contacts on the MFJ magnetic loop. Me and John were, John couldn't type them in fast enough as fast as I was pulling him out. And yeah. uh, that was a, a record breaking year there, but yeah. uh, glad you're having fun here, Dwayne. Oh yeah, 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 I'll be here all night. <laughs> <laughs> He's usually the resident uh, overnight CW expert. Yeah, if I can stay awake. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so here's here's what I know in CW after I forgot what I learned. Watch this. I can do it this way because <laughs> Dwayne says, well, you don't know, no, I got to reverse the key. No, you don't because I'll do it this way. We'll do W4OT. Oh, oh hold on. Now I got to remember now. That's W, right? Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. W4OT, but then I can do it backwards. <laughs> so, so I can do it back. So I can do it. Hey, this is this hooked up? Now that's the confusing one. Well, that's a bug. So yeah. It won't work right. It's only going to send dots. Ah, so there we go. One more time. Oh. There you go. Or, or. Oh, here's the bomb. He can send it upside down. <laughs> can you right send side up, up? Can you send upside down, Dwayne? I, I can't. No, no I can't. <laughs> That's wait, a is, wait, is, wait a second. This is called a cootie. Yeah. So you you made this. I made that. Tell me what it is. It's it's a cootie key or a side swiper. And this is the the first. This is actually the second key that came after the straight key. They had the straight key and they were getting carpal tunnel, the telegraphers. You told me that last time, right. Yeah, so they, they went to the side swiper and, and all you do is go back and forth with it. And that was like before a paddle. There's no, you know, dashes on one side or dots on another. It's like whatever comes, you know, dot, dash, dot, dot, dash, dot, 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 oh. dot dash, dash, dash. Whatever. So you could so you could do da like like da di da di da da di da. Yeah, like, you just okay. go back and forth, back and forth. Right. So it, it's kind of like two straight keys back to back. So that all it is, is, and it's called a side swiper or a cootie. And this is a homemade one. They sell commercial ones, of course, but this was made out of a hacksaw blade, uh, two coat buttons from Walmart, <laughs> <laughs> some. L brackets from uh, Home Depot <laughs> with some brass screws and some terminals I got from the junk shop. And that's it. And you use this? I've been using it for the last year and a half. Wow. And it's, it's really hard to get used to at first when you first use it. Because you're used to the paddle. You're you used to dashes on one paddle, side. Right. Because the dashes are always on this side and the dots are always on that side. Unless, you, unless you're like me, then you could do it this way. Yeah, or, or, or <laughs> yeah, this right, way. Right, right. <laughs> so that's my uh, K4 LNN Cootie, which I built one one of eighteen. Look at that! I revised it and two five of eighteen. <laughs> 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 and this is, and oh, and the base came from uh, Hobby Lobby. Wow! So the whole thing costs like ten bucks. So Dwayne says if you want one for 150, he'll make it. <laughs> <laughs> that is cool. Kuda key. Yeah, so that's actually a second key. Like I said, it came out after the straight key and then came the bug. Right. This radio has been transmitting on this bio A over here since like 9.30 this afternoon or evening. 
it's transmitting like every six seconds. I have my uh, little voice memo on there, and I call CQ in between. Uh, but when I get a little bit tired or there's nothing going on, I have it calling. Uh, we did lose the software server, the server for the software, so now all my spots are uh, not uploading to the total count. But it is 12.45 in the morning. <laughs> so, update. <clears throat> it's about 3 o'clock in the morning. I can't take any more. I have to go to sleep. It's about uh, 40, uh, 44 in the trailer. They have a hot shower. Took a swim in the pool. Hot shower. <laughs> Someone to spoon with. Oh boy, so I think it's time for me to go to bed. My plan is tomorrow, hopefully, uh, if I could hit, well, I got to clean up first. We got a mess in here. I got to offer John a little bit of cleanup service. Um, I got my can of iced coffee in the fridge and hoping to at least work a couple on six meters on the Moxon. And satellite pass at like 910, if that works. Elevation is only 20, doesn't seem promising. Hopefully use the uh, long wire on 10 meters and then pack up and uh, continue the rest of my day, which is a long day. Night, John. Night. Okay, so in the morning about 8.30, uh, I'm tired, I feel like crap. Now, last night I jumped in the pool had a nice hot shower over there they got a hot shower so that made it feel real good what we're going to do now is uh, i was playing on 20 a little bit this morning as well as uh two meter sideband and we got another satellite pass we're going to try this number three okay and this satellite pass is going to be way down here and it's going to go like that Okay, so we should have a uh, clear shot right on the, even on the horizon of the water there. And we're going to be set up over there at the umbrella one more time. Whiskey Ford, Oscar Tango, W4OT, 6 Alpha, Sierra Foxtrot Lead, 6 Alpha, South Florida, Whiskey Ford, Oscar Tango, 6 Alpha, Sierra Foxtrot Lead, QRZ. Whiskey Ford, Oscar Tango, And we did it. Satellite. Right there. I made one contact with Kilo 4 Mike November, 2 Alpha, North Carolina. On the satellite with John's help. Thank you, John. Welcome. Everybody else's help, but that was tough. Third time's a charm. Uh, November 9 station again, please. John's got a pilot going. Two Alpha. This is uh, end November nine. Victor India November. Was that a two Alpha? Yeah, two Alpha Indiana. Two Alpha Indiana. Uh, copy two Alpha Indiana. Please copy six Alpha South Florida. Six Alpha South Florida. Good luck to you as well. QRZ. Whiskey four Oscar Tango. Whiskey four Oscar Tango. Calling CQ Field Day. John, how many contacts did you make? Uh on 20 this morning? Uh, probably a good dozen in the last 15 minutes. How do you like that 7300? Um, sweet radio. Are you are you getting one? Absolutely. Has that made up your mind? Uh, yeah, I'm getting one. As a matter of fact, I'm selling my uh, FT450 right now, so if anybody wants to buy that. How much? Uh, I'll take 450 plus shipping for it. With a tuner built in, that's the D model? Uh, it's the FT450 with the automatic tuner, it's not the D model. Not the D, but it works, yeah, it works good. It works great. 450, you could buy John's, the ASU FT450. He is buying an ICOM 7300. Let me know, send me a message. Field day, Whiskey 4, Oscar Tango. Whiskey 4, Oscar Tango, field day. Day, Whiskey 4 Oscar Tango, W4OT, South Florida, Whiskey 4 Oscar Tango, Field Day. Six meters is open. Hey, what EUS? Yep. Yeah. Seeky Field Day, Seeky Field Day, Seeky Field Day, W4 Oscar Tango, W4 Oscar Tango. Easy for one to make, huh, Jan? Antenna is 
a simple Moxon antenna. And a Moxon is nothing more than a two element beam. You've got your driven element and a reflector. Okay, I do have a one-to-one -one balance on there. You don't really have to have one. I just happened to have it laying in the box and it made it easy to connect. The antenna cost about $15 to make. There's solid uh, number 12 wire up on top of the PVC. A simple PVC loop, I found it online. I wish I could remember the guy's call. What are you doing, Armstrong, in, uh, Armstrong rotor? Armstrong rotator, I actually had to preload and twist the cable and tape it to keep it from moving dead west like you just saw it move. We're yeah. right here on the ocean. You can see the other antenna on the trailer. That uh, was a donated classic Mosley 33, and we just made it uh, into a Mosley 32 as a two-element Yagi. So uh, it's easier to take apart, put together, and run on the trailer. As you see, we have a Luma Tower, and uh, makes it nice and handy. And uh, take the antenna off, take the rotator off, drop the antenna down on a motorized winch, and hook it up, and away we go. Away we go. Man, there's a lot of antennas around here. I was showing some video earlier. There's wires everywhere. Right, we have a 15 meter dipole here is the first thing you see off the flagpole. The next thing in line with it to the next building across the street is an offset window, 80 meter. That's running east-west. Then the north-south is another uh, 80 meter offset window. And of course they work very well on everything uh, uh, 10 to 80 except for 15. That's why we put up the 15 meter dipole. And then what's, uh, that's John's, uh, let's see, where are we at? Here's John's antenna right there on the top of the tower that's a end fed i guess right there that, that box the, on, uh, on the top I of think the tower? We have, yeah i think we have two end feds well i have the chameleon mcom there which worked okay the thing about that i hey check this out that mcom without a tuner with a counterpoise wire on it is like 1.5 on 10 12 20 30 40 it's Hard, it's almost resonant everywhere. Fully it's, functional, all you yeah. need in the field. Cut out the tuners, leave them home. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I just use the tuner just to clean it up, but it's uh, it's actually resonant on most all the bands with that match in there. So excellent. I got to yeah. check that out more, and I got that way over there by that sprinkler. Yeah, and of course we were surprised today. Six came up, six meters, ten meters came up this morning. So don't be a scope head. Get on there and call CQ. Yeah. Oh yeah, so I knocked out a few six meter contacts, a couple 10 meter contacts this morning, it's about 11.30. I bet you Dwayne's back in here. This guy has just racked up a ton of CW contacts. My camera doesn't fog. Let's see, is he in there? Oh, he's not in there. Okay, he must be inside. Dwayne, I see you have, you have a pile up of CW contacts in there. You are the ambassador of CW contacts here at Field Day. Uh huh, yeah. How is it, how, what did you find? Your results this year? How many? Or what was it like? Was it easy? Was it hard? Oh, it was hard. Was it? Yesterday during the day was not good, um, but it picked up in the evening real good. And it wasn't too bad overnight, but uh, then it died off again towards dawn, and now it's picked up again a little bit. Well, but um, not not as good as past years. Uh, yeah. You still have almost 200 contacts, sir. 227, right? 227 now. contacts, sweet. Awesome. Usually I get three, 400, but I don't think I'm going to make 300 this year. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Dwayne. Okay. Yeah, and you don't have to spend a lot of money on field day to have a good time. Absolutely. Now, how many contacts you made, Jan? None. You just like I hook up the antennas. He's 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 the, he's the one making sure everybody's got I'm a radio the oil. Hooking up radios, bringing radios. We found bad jumper leads between the 100-watt uh, QRP radio and 100-watt amplifier. Oh, the antenna's got to be bad. Oh, this is but no, it was the guy's own jumper lead that he hasn't removed from the house in years, and it was right in the shack. So don't take anything for granted. Start at your antenna and move through your lengths of coax and find your problem, but be logical about it because it's always usually the simplest thing or the connector that's 30 to 100 feet up in the air. And, the and, and to make contacts, don't be a scope head, call CQ.